What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. We are in the Cave of Slaughter, which is nowhere near as awesome as the Cave of Wonders from Aladdin. By the way, is it just me or did that giant ruby that Abu picked up, did it look delicious? Like it looked like you could just take a bite out of the side and that it would taste like a giant gusher. But anyways, we've got this axe right here. This axe is great because this is a fighting axe, which it's not quite as good as the flare gun, but it's still pretty awesome. I don't think we're probably going to die from here on out because honestly, the flare gun basically borders on the exploitative. And so I think it's, I probably should have made Molotov cocktails. That probably would have fixed that last problem for me. Ah, well. If dreams and fishes, or um, dreams and wishes were loaves and fishes, we would all be to Jesus. But anyways, let's go upstairs. Well, these aren't really stairs. It's more of like a slanted ground. But we're going to do our best to make our way out of the cave o murder This place is slightly terrifying. It makes me scared, and I feel like I'm going to have nightmares now. So let's go ahead and vacate its premises as rapidly as we can. Now, there are treasures to be found throughout this place. So if you want to have a look around a little bit longer than I do, I would recommend it. You will find stuff here. And I think we have a flashlight. There we go. Much better. A bucket right there, just in case you've got a seal with you. Or in case you want to make sand castles, which, as a little-known fact, help kind of... Well, it's a diversion. It takes your mind off the cannibals. There's also a bunch of cash laying around, so I suppose we'll take that. Yes, definitely. Please, thank you. Who knows? Maybe they're addicted to cash, and at one point I'll be able to barter my own safety. Who even knows what cannibals want ever? Is that a tunnel right there? No, it's not. These caves can be really, really hard to navigate, by the way, because they have the tendency to sort of be both sprawling and simultaneously a little bit labyrinthian. And so I'm going to do my best not to get lost. I've been in here enough times to basically know my way around. I die pretty consistently. I'm bad at this game, by the way, in case you didn't know. I'm really, really bad at this game. But with the fighting axe, I can block now. And with the flare gun, I can set the enemy on fire, which works out great. You know how when the tank shows up in Left 4 Dead, you just set him on fire and you're just like, eh, we'll be okay now. We'll just let the fire do its job. You can basically do the same thing in this game. You set dudes on fire and then you just wait for them to die. Let's see if we can make our way on up and out of here. Now there is going to be a split up here, there's going to be a fork, and you can go off to the right, and there are, as far as I understand, some cannibals down that way. I don't know if necessarily it would be our wisest decision to tangle with them right now, because we are basically in roguelike mode right now, where if we die again, it's the end of our game. There's another unfortunate- oh my god, her face is missing. Yikes. I suppose there's no way for her to save face in this position. Very, very, why was everybody wearing the same uniform outfit on the plane? Like, was this a plane on the way to some place where they're going to make us drink Kool-Aid or something? I'm going to go and let's whip this out, just in case we make any friends down in here. And this is the way to the cannibals, by the way. I'm kind of doing something ill-advised at the moment for action and advent. Why are there pills up on the wall? I guess the cannibal had a headache or something. Had to get rid of that nasty ache and pain brought on by your daily cannibal life. I don't see him, but one time when I came down in here, there was like a bunch of them sitting down in here, so I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. There's a free flashlight. We already have one. So that's not going to be too useful. Oh, it goes down even further. Well, do we give in to the temptation and go for it? What is this? A purse? And more money! Alright, not going to do us a whole lot of good, but we'll take it in case they ever add a vendor or something. I suppose we can explore a little bit further. I've never been down this way. So let's go have a look. What's the worst that could happen? Nothing terrible could ever happen in a cave full of cannibals and dead bodies hanging from ropes. What could feasibly twist this situation in a negative direction? I can't think of anything. What in the hell is that? I'm not so sure I want to use my... Oh my. I'm done. Yep, I'm off the ride. That's enough internet for day. I'm out of here. Those things have limbs in locations where limbs should not be. Oh good, my flashlight's breaking because the universe loves me. Can I drop this? Because it appears to be dead? Because there's another one over here, and I would rather take the one that's full up if I can. Now, the game does have a lot of bugs regarding, like, weird inventory situations, so it may not be an option right now. I'm going to go back and try and pick it up. We're going to do our best, but as it stands right now, 
I'm going to assume that I've lost the battle here. Yeah, it doesn't appear to be working. So let's pick our maybe. Oh, it does. Okay, so it stays in your inventory. It's just all used up. And then I'm getting the hell out of this cave because there's some weird, like, human centipede action going on down there. They're twisting around. They're making all kinds of grunty noises. And frankly, I largely feel uncomfortable right now. I feel as though I've witnessed some unspeakable horror that I'm not necessarily allowed to talk about. And over there we had an invisible piece of luggage, which just vanished, which is also horrifying. I mean, haunted luggage on the scale of things that have terrified me on this adventure, it ranks kind of low, but it's still kind of scary. It's still a little bit scary. Whack those down, and we've got a levitating axe over here. That's fine. He can levitate if he wants to. He can leave your friends behind. Because if your axe don't levitate, and if it don't levitate, then it's no axe of mine? I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm at a loss for where I should go with this whole diatribe, to be fair. I just keep talking. The lips keep moving, things keep coming out, but I can't guarantee that they're all necessarily going to be cogent. We're missing a stick, so I'm going to pick up one stick. And now is the time that we probably want to make a little bit of distance in between us and the enemy, considering we just escaped from their version of Guantanamo Bay. I don't see anything really useful over here. There's a spear. They tend to leave spears laying around in locations where there's fish. However, the last time I tried to eat fish, they were a little bit bugged. And so, we'll see what we can do with them. Basically, what happens is when you place the fish on the fire, the fish goes through the fire, and then you can't get it back out of the fire. And that becomes a major problem, because fish are only useful to me if I can digest them. And so, past the point where I can no longer digest them, fish are of absolutely no interest to me any further. And I feel kind of bad for the fish, because I do like fish, but if I can't eat them, well, then I quit. If only we could find some lemon and pepper up on this bitch, we would be able to make lemon pepper fish, and then we'd be, ooh. I don't really like fish that much in real- Oh, are you serious? We walk like five feet out of the jail, and there's a bunch of cavernals. Great. We do have a flare gun, though, so this is kind of an easy problem to solve. Equip it, damn it. We do have infinite bullets, by the way, for this, so we can just keep firing it as much as we want. We could basically unload on them. It's ridiculous. It allows you to unleash the Daka with the full fury of the Emperor, should you choose to do so. And in this case, I think that we would choose to do so, considering they're trying to kill us. And this would put a very, very short end to our LP, considering I haven't even built anything yet. I built, like, one hunting lodge. they got to at least let me build a small city first, and then they can come and murder me. After I feel like I've accomplished something, like I've donated something to the betterment of the island. I think this is going to be our lake right here. Yeah, there it is. The boat is off there to the side. And I don't want to... I mean, down this way, there's going to be more berries. But for now... Oh, good, it's raining. That means we're going to need a fire pretty soon. So when it rains, you get cold and wet. I don't necessarily know if the game has implemented any mechanic to go around being cold and wet. I haven't noticed myself getting sick or anything like that when I leave myself cold and wet. So I don't tend to worry about it. How many rocks do I have right now? Only two. Let's pick up some rocks while we're out here as well. Also some leaves. There we go. Grab a couple of rocks. It's going to put my gun away when I pick up the rocks for some reason. I don't know. I can bash things with rocks rust style. I didn't even know you could equip a rock like that. That's interesting. What happens if I do two rocks at once? Oh, there's some teeth. Where did I get teeth from? I don't remember looting teeth. It's a little bit morbid. It's a little dark. It's a little dark, but I'll take it. Ah, blackberries. Keep ourselves sustained a little bit longer. Save us from the unending entropy of our dietary situation. And then if we can make it back to our house, we might be able to accomplish something here. I think this is our pile of sticks. Yeah, that's our pile of sticks. I love you, pile of sticks. You're one of the few things on this island that hasn't betrayed me. A little bit of pop-in right there, but nothing that's kind of unusual for a game of this scope. I, I don't mind pop-in as much as other people do. If you don't know what pop-in is, it's where you walk over and you see how the objects just sort of appear. That's pop-in. It's called graphical pop-in or textural pop-in. Some people are driven batshit nutty by it. Other people, like me, not necessarily bothered. Ooh, there's a whole bunch of sticks over here. Thank you, universe, for all of the free sticks. I think I was chopping down sticks, actually, when the cannibals decided to show up. And that was what ended my stick-gathering vacation. Equip this right here, and then we'll chop some trees, and we'll fill up this holder, even though I was planning on doing that in between episodes, but then interesting things happened. So that's fine. When interesting things happen, I tend to roll with it. I tend to treat myself as though I am round, and also on an incline, and see how far away I can get with each individual roll. Nonetheless, having escaped the nasty little pelican bay of cavernals, 
we've made our way back to our base. I'm going to store up some more logs, and then I hope in this episode we're going to be able to get ourselves all nice and hunkered in with some building projects. I'd like to build our cabin first. I'm hoping we don't get the levitation bug. Right now, there is a bug related to building cabins where sometimes your log cabin levitates like 10 feet off the ground and then you can't use it. Other times it drops down in. If you've seen the bugs that tend to happen in Rust, then you've seen most of the bugs that happen in this game as well. So just kind of be aware. Unfortunately, my alarm has decided to go off. I was worried that I might sleep in too long. And so I wanted to get some serious LPing done today, and so I set myself a loverly little alarm so that I could join you folks here on the internet to play ourselves another round of the forest. This axe will never break on us, which is a nice thing to consider. I've heard that the stone axe is actually faster than this one, which boggles the mind, frankly. We're at low energy right now. Where is that tree falling to? It's trying to fall into the holster. If we nail that right there, we're going to be like the Tiger Woods of Lumberjacks. Oh, well, we failed. We failed miserably. Go ahead and load that thing up. We'll grab some of these logs from downhill. Health looking a little... I'm sorry, not health. Ooh, I put mud all over myself. That's right. So if you find these little mud piles around, you can make yourself out like Arnold from Terminator and just cover yourself in mud, and it acts as a camouflage for you. It works incredibly well, in fact. I do think that the mechanic is implemented because I've noticed you can walk right up on cannibals when you have your camouflage on, and it, I guess you could call it camouflage if you really wanted to be wordplay about it. I don't know if you're really so inclined. I always feel the need to be wordplay about everything if it's available. A feather? Where did that feather go? I saw a feather floating through the air. There it is. I don't know if the feathers do anything. You can't combine them with anything yet. I've tried and nothing happens. You can't even click them, so I think it's just one of those items that hasn't had its ultimate use added into the game. Right now, a lot of what you're going to see are just assets. They're just things that are in the game but aren't necessarily ready to roll couple of cannibals doing a little beachside stroll down there, having a good time, diverting themselves in the way that cannibals do, aside from murdering innocent people that crash land on their island. Maybe they don't know any better. Maybe societally they haven't evolved to the point where they know that murdering people is wrong. But as it stands right now, I feel like that might be one of the first rules that you should probably invent, just in the off chance that killing your own people proves... I mean, it's going to be difficult to keep people around if you keep killing them. I'm just saying. So anyways, let's start with... A big shelter. I would love to make a log cabin. Did they nerf that? It says 35 logs. Last time I did this, it was like 80. Yeah, it says 82. Oh, I feel lied to. I got all excited right there like they had patched the game or something and made it 35 logs. Alright, well, let's start adding logs over here, and then we'll also get our dinner cooking. So you press E to oh, light the fire. Once the fire has been lit, in order to cook your food, you're going to press the I key, you're going to go in, you're going to left click on the rabbit, for example, and then you're going to press the C key to drop it onto whatever object. In general, when you're interacting with objects, it's going to be the C key that makes it work. I'm going to cook that, we're going to get some energy back, it's going to refill our stomach, it's going to be a jolly old time, we're going to feel nice and bloated, it's going to be like Hometown Buffet all over again. I don't know about you guys, but whenever I go to Hometown Buffet, I end up just feeling absolutely sick to my stomach because I have no self-control. It's embarrassing, largely. And so, yeah, what you're looking at right here, you see how those are levitating? I think we are going to get the cabin bug. I'm going to finish the cabin just because I want to validate a rumor that I've heard. I've heard that if you finish the cabin, it'll drop down to the ground. I've heard several people make mention of this, and so having heard it from multiple sources now, I'm more inclined to try and test it. If it ends up failing, then what we'll do is we'll just consider this whole thing to be a waste. We'll come back later, and we'll just build some walls around this little hunting lodge, and that'll be the best that we can accomplish during the course of this LP. I think we've just about loaded up on logs. I'm a little bit disappointed by the fact that these log holsters don't hold quite as many logs as I had hoped. We should also probably check on our dinner right about now. So let's do that. We should also probably carry around a better damn weapon. Let's carry around the flare gun because that little tiny hatchet is not conducive to surviving any of the enemies that are going to come at us. Is it done yet? You can't burn yourself to death, by the way. Anything? I think it should be cooked by now, but sometimes this little icon for the leaves gets in the way of you eating your food, and so we may need to move the fire to a better location. Why are you all gathering on my house? It is not that awesome. You guys are treating my house like it's a power wire, like it's warm or something. Oh, there's even more logs in there. I thought it was out. Okay, that's cool. I'll take a couple of freebies if you're on offering. Well, if you're on offer. 
74 more logs to go. So much progress, so little time. Yeah, and it looks as though our bunny is lost. I am going to try and get it out of here, but there's no guarantee. Did I eat it? No. There's no guarantee that I'll be able to. Sometimes your food gets stuck in the fire. I don't know. Instead, we'll eat a chocolate bar right now because that was an unforeseen circumstance that I have no way of remedying. If it ends up fixing itself in a little bit, like once the fire goes out, we'll go ahead and give that a try. I can't guarantee that it will, but we can hold out for it just in the hopes that we haven't completely and totally wasted that rabbit. And I'm not talking about in the alcoholic sense. I'm not running about in the forest giving 40s to rabbits just being like, woo, let's get our hood on. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing that. I don't roll like that. I don't give underage rabbits alcohol. That's a felony. Definitely a good way to get yourself arrested on a Friday Eve. Oh my god, we're not even a quarter of the way there. <laughs> Why you make my life so difficult, Logs? Why you make my life so difficult? God, I'm going to have to chop down so many trees to get this done. I can tell already. We're going to have a major tear in the eye of Smokey the Bear by the time we finish this. Does Smokey the Bear care about cutting down trees? As far as I understand, Smokey the Bear should only care about me burning down trees. Aside from burning down trees... Okay, so we're out of logs, sort of. There's one over here. There's probably a couple laying down in this gully somewhere. Because they have the tendency to roll downhill. It's just one of those natural features of logs rolling downhill. Generally just being on their way. They don't really care about human devices and human plans. They go where they wilt. I really hope this cabin decides to drop down to the ground after we finish this. If it doesn't, I'm going to be disappointed on several levels. Let's grab... I've heard that the stone axe is better, so I'm going to go ahead and use it for now. They took away our stone axe for some reason once we got back to... I guess it makes sense. It was clearly the most dangerous weapon in our inventory. Not that sharp looking red axe or, you know, the explosives or the molotovs or anything. It was definitely the stone axe that was the most lethal to anybody that might stumble across us during our survival adventure. Come on, tree. Let me chop ya. I was going to make a joke about a tree's favorite classical music, but I think I'm just going to leave that there. It was, it was going to be a joke about Chopin, but, you know, I would have to mispronounce it, and then I'd have to, like, for, like, you, for example, for example, I made an LP one time that got, like, popular, where I talked about drinking toilet water out of the bowl, and to this day, I still get emails from people telling me that you can drink water out of the cistern, and so I feel like the moment that I mispronounce Chopin, that I'm going to be locking myself into an endless circle of emails and people being like, his name isn't Chopin. And I, it's the humor. It's I was trying to make the jokesies. I was trying my bestest. I was plying my trade as best as I can. Oh good, they're headed back this way again. Someone told me that they can hear you chopping wood, and it is true. They do seem to show up every time you start deforesting. I feel like they're probably just naturalists. They really feel as though you just shouldn't be knocking down their forest. It makes them upset. But... Are they behind me? That tree's going to go that direction. Okay, so they're over there. The chances, realistically, of them coming all the way up the hill over to here and discovering us, pretty slim. It could happen. So I'll keep an eye on it, just in case. But I don't think they're going to make it over here. Continue throwing logs into this thing. I may attempt to finish building this thing in between episodes. I don't know. We'll see what happens. We want to surround it with edifices, though, or I forget what they're called. Basically, you can chop up the enemies into little bits and bobs, like you could take their hands and feet, and you can decorate your house with their hands and feet, and it scares the remainder of them off. So they see it, and they're like, whoa, we don't want to mess with this guy. He knows how to use human body parts as house accessories. This guy's like the bed, bath, and beyond of murder. And so it makes them upset, at which point they just stay the hell away from your house. I would think it would make them angrier, because if I showed up and I saw my Aunt Nellie's hand as part of somebody's window... I would be like, well, that's kind of a major problem for me. I kind of like my Aunt Nelly, so maybe I should get some kind of revenge. However, cannibals apparently don't think in that direction, so that's good. That's a very, very good thing for us. 25 logs in place. We'll grab a few more right here, and oh my god. Please go away, Alarm. I really do despise you. Like, you are beginning to upset me, Alarm. I hit the snooze button the previous time, and so it backfired on me. Ah, let's chop this tree down, and the hellish glow of our campfire is more than likely going to give us away to the enemy, which is not a good thing for us. Is this tree ever going to fall down, or... The sound of birds flying 
leads me to believe every single time that there are bad guys around there that are about to kill me. Oh, our, our axe broke. Okay, so that's what happened. If you notice, the animation bugged out for a minute, and I was trying to figure out exactly why. Well, we figured out why. It's because your stone axe can break. So it's just one of those things to be aware of as you play the game. Your tools will eventually fall apart on you. It's just kind of the natural process. For now, I think it's probably a good idea to sleep since I don't want to bore you guys with too much nighttime stuff. It's very, very dark at night. It becomes incredible. Who would have ever thought that nighttime would be dark? Go figure. You don't say, Splattercat. You don't say. How many sticks do I have right now? Way too many. Let's get ourselves a little nappy poo right here. And having slept the night away, our bunny is still ruined. We're not able to get access to it. We're going to spend a few more minutes chopping trees. And then I'm going to break off the episode. I'll do my best to store up as many of these as I can. And then we'll finish the cabin. I think I'm going to finish the cabin in between episodes. You guys get the basic idea of how it's done. Essentially, you just press the B button. You go to the log cabin under the shelters menu. You press R to rotate it to where you want. You press E to place it in the... What the hell was that? Oh, that noise scared the hell out of me. I heard like a squishy noise, like somebody tried to murder me or something. But anyways, you press the E key to place it down on the ground. After that, you just gather logs. You run over with said logs. I think this tree's just going to turn into sticks. It's not going to turn into logs. You're not going to fool me, little tiny sapling. I don't need sticks right now. Sticks is not what I need. This is not a come sail away type situation in which I need uplifting music. I do not need sticks. No. Instead, we will go with kiss. But anyways... Let's chop this tree on down. we got about three minutes left, and I'd like to at least get this thing half done before I break off the episode. We'll move on to this tree right here, because he looks like a good victim. This tree has victim written on its forehead. Where the forehead... Where the forehead... I hear screaming. Where the forehead is on a tree, I couldn't necessarily tell you. Like, I couldn't point to the place on the doll. Yeah, that's not a happy sound. That is not the sound of joyful communion. Although music kicks in, so we are slightly assured that nothing bad's gonna happen because it gets like this little doo doo music whenever something shows up. One more time, just doo doo. That's what it sounds like. In case you were wondering, I just wanted to make sure that everybody was on the same page and that when your doo doo happens, you'll be completely and totally aware what it means. What is that right there? Is that more mud? I'm still covered in mud. Don't even care. Still covered in mud. Sounds like a Primus song. Covered in mud. <laughs> oh God. We're almost halfway there. We are almost halfway there. We have almost completed our first major building progress, or our first major building project. If we can accomplish this, it saves us a truckload of time in the coming episode. So just be aware that this will be the last time we have to do any major construction. After this, we'll be putting in fences and booby traps, and then we'll also be making... What are those things called? It's bothering me now. Effigies. That's what they're called. Effigies. So, it's definitely not something you want to do while you're in the hood. You definitely don't want an effigy in the hood. But anyways, it definitely keeps them off of your back with those nasty little deadly clubs that they have. Especially since the enemy has the weird penchant to one-shot you. Why they one-shot you, I'm not really sure. It seems to have something related to do with the... Or it seems to be related to the physics engine. Like, you saw how I got killed last time, how it rocketed me through the air super hardcore. That's exactly what I'm talking about. God, this is horrifying. This needs to stop right now. Where are they? I know they're around here, and the game doesn't have a pause. And I've got to actually, like, leave this game. i got to out-tab the game and go out, and i got to start the next recording. Oh, there they are. Okay, so they're running around on that side. Get the flare gun out. And I'm going to break off the episode. So my name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me in the Intercast for another episode of The Forest. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. And I do. I'll be back very, very shortly.